What's poppin' everyone? It's your boy Alan, back again for another I Dream of Indie review. Today we're taking a look at Heroes of Hammerwatch, developed by Crack Shell and published by Bitworks. This title is currently available on both Steam and the Nintendo Switch, which is the version we're taking a look at today. With what has been classified as an action-adventure roguelite with online and couch co-op, this title features procedurally generated dungeons and a persistent progression system as you choose from one of nine classes to take out into the world to revitalize your town and eventually tackle the Forsaken Spire. Alright, so this was an interesting experience for me. I usually discuss gameplay first, but I kind of have to address the elephant in the room. Most of us, if not all of us here at I Dream of Indie, love a good retro aesthetic. That being said, there's a right way and a wrong way to do the 8-bit style, and in my humble opinion, this game is just ugly. The overall map looks fine enough, as I can clearly identify what each element on the map is supposed to be. However, the entire game is zoomed out way too much, thus rendering minimal clarity in enemy, NPC, or character designs. This became more of a distraction in the dungeons as I couldn't tell what was health, what was ore, what were enemies, what were diamonds, or what the hell anything really was until I ran into them. Honestly, from a visual standpoint, this game is just kinda ugly, and really unimpressive to me. The sound design was good, I'll give the game credit where credit is due, and between the music and the sound effects, this title took me back to the days of Apogee and Sierra, and my friends, that is a great thing. I've played plenty of games I didn't dig the visuals on over the years, as well as there have been many well-polished looking AAA busts that can attest that graphics aren't everything. Typically, gameplay is the ultimate measurement for how good a game is. In this roguelite, you pick one of the nine classes. While all of them have distinct abilities, they all pretty much feel the same. Just spam weapon attacks or mana attacks as you pile your way through each run trying to collect as much loot as possible. You're going to die a lot in this game, and I'm not going to lie, it's a bit frustrating with the difficulty. Once you enter a dungeon, there's no way out except to clear every floor. At level 1, this is not possible. So your goal early on becomes to collect as much pixelated loot as you can and drop it off in a dumbwaiter located somewhere at random on each floor in order to save your haul. Then you find the exit to the next floor and repeat. You get one potion per dungeon with potential to recharge it at specific spots that spawn at random or not at all. As you progress more and more, enemies will spawn at higher rates and you quickly are overrun and killed. You lose any items that you are carrying, however you keep your level progression. This loop continues on over and over until you earn enough items for an upgrade or gain sufficient levels to clear the dungeon with ease. Don't forget to constantly find a dumbwaiter on each floor or everything you collected fades into the ether. This is essentially the gameplay loop, and whether or not the near endless loop of grinding, sending items back to town, dying it and doing it all over again sounds like fun to you or not will dictate whether you enjoy this game. If you couldn't tell, I really didn't. I am not one for having to spend hours of setup to just enjoy a game. There should be reward and enjoyment during the setup time instead of having to spend immense amount of times grinding on an unfulfilling loop just to reach a point where the challenge versus reward feels balanced and enjoyable. This game does feature online and local co-op, so I decided to give that a try. I found one server available during my time with this title on the Switch, and after about 5 minutes of purchasing item and armor upgrades, our connection was lost. I do believe that the multiplayer functionality is going to be where this game shines though, as being able to accumulate gold and levels will attribute to the player being able to carry a better assortment of items and armor upgrades into dungeons, thus crafting a better single player experience. Just the single player experience on its own for me was just kind of hot garbage. Overall, whether or not you like this game comes down to two factors. Are you comfortable with the visual aesthetic? And does the endless loop of grinding levels and gold while dying over and over appeal to you? If not, then this game is going to frustrate you. I typically like games that follow the Diablo formula of procedurally generated dungeons and a loot grind. However, the entire time I was playing this title, I felt like I could be playing a better game in the genre. Standing at 20 bucks on the Switch, the game does come with all the available DLC at a decent discount over what it would cost on the Steam counterpart. If this looks appealing to you, by all means go for it. While it's not my cup of tea, I can certainly see the potential for this game to be a ton of fun for those willing to endure the hours of setup. With that, I do think it's time for me to wrap things up here, and as always, this is Alan with I Dream of Indie saying sayonara, and I'll see you when I see you. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Alan. I want to thank you again for tuning in to another one of my videos. You can help support I Dream of Indie's mission statement to bring a voice to the voiceless in gaming by subscribing to the channel, hitting that bell icon, consider becoming a member, and if nothing else, check out another one of our videos.